Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, it's, it's nice to see everyone so excited straight away before I even said a word. Um, but yeah, today I'm, I'm going to be talking about the security risks of Web 2.0. Um, I'm really, I'm not going to be deep diving into anything in particular. But what I'm trying to do today is give a wider coverage. Is give um, a wider coverage. Um, than maybe some other presentations on this topic. So I'm not going to talk about just one or two different vulnerabilities. I'm actually going to try and squeeze ten of them in, so I don't know if that makes me mad or not for trying to do that, but that's what we're going to cover today. So firstly, there'll be a, a very quick Web 2.0 definition, um, looking then at uh, common uh, vulnerabilities, some of the differences between Web 1 and Web 2 for those vulnerabilities. Um, why a security analyst job, i.e. my job, is more difficult when it comes to Web 2.0 applications and how to prevent these vulnerabilities in your own code. So um, my name is David Rook. I'm a security analyst uh, for a company called Relex Payments in Ireland. Uh, we're a payments processing company. We do kind of in excess of, I think it's 6 billion euros worth of uh, credit card transactions each year. Um, I have a couple of different websites. Uh, security Ninja is, is my blog. Um, I do a lot of work with OS, uh, contributing, um, helping setting up conferences, speaking at conferences and so on for them. Um, I'm the security advisor for the Irish Internet Association. Um, we have a web development working group um, where we try and help uh, small development companies in Ireland understand um, how to deliver development projects, and I help them understand security issues. Um, I've also found a few... Um, uh, security issues in, in Facebook, and we'll look at one of those later on as well. So kind of, like I said, I just wanted to say up front what this presentation is and what it isn't. Um, so it's not going to be a, a technical discussion about Web 2.0 technologies and architectures. It will be a discussion about vulnerabilities in Web 2.0 applications. Uh, there's no zero days, no new attacks or so on here, but it's also not just a discussion about cross-site scripting and SQL injection. We're going to look at, like I said before, 10 uh, different vulnerabilities today um, and how you can prevent them in your own code. So kind of on the screen there is, is Tim O'Reilly's um, quite famous quote, I think, by now, about what Web 2.0 is. But instead of trying to run through that, I've just got this image here, which probably allows you to understand the types of websites we're talking about. So you know, Facebook, Wikipedia, YouTube, uh, those types of websites are the kind of sites we're, we're talking about today. So some of the, the key points about Web 2.0 is that we've, we've kind of switched away from um, people visiting websites to read uh, site-provided content to the sites essentially just becoming a framework that users come along and fill in. So things like social networking sites and YouTube. Um, there's a desire to have a desktop look and feel to, to those web applications, but there's also a feeling that kind of everything can go online now. So with things like Google Documents, you can do all your word processing, spreadsheets, etc. online. But there's also things like iOS, which is a, a full operating system that you can use within your browser. Um, there's the um, feeling to have kind of a syndication of content as well. So a user doesn't want to come back to your page 10 times a day to see if you've made any updates. We use things like RSS and Atom and I guess even websites like Twitter nowadays to, to allow people to see updates to your site quickly. Um, and another key point which I think will become a bigger problem um, in the next probably year or so is the offline storage of data and state. So probably Google Gears would be the, the leader in this at the moment where it will essentially create update and delete databases on your local file system. So there's kind of no concept of on or offline working with that. And if HTML5 ever gets approved, um, then that will also be bringing that kind of functionality along as well, creating these databases, allowing the, the, the sites to to create databases on your file system is not particularly something I feel uh, comfortable with, but um, if you want to know more about the issues around that, uh, come and grab me afterwards. I've got a, a presentation I did last year that I can, I can show you on that. Um, kind of for, for time reasons, I'm not going to step through everything on here, apart from kind of just to point out the last two points at the bottom. Um, Web 1.0, we had poor security, and in Web 2.0, we're kind of repeating the same issues. Um, really, you know, some of the key points off there, you know, a, a, from a user point of view, uh, their web experience has changed from coming along and reading content to coming along and providing content. There are different technologies there, different security issues. So 
the vulnerabilities we're going to look at today, probably by name, a lot of these will be familiar to people. The cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgery, um, SQL injection, authentication, authorization flaws. And I guess if I was sitting in the crowd now, I'd probably be thinking that, that well, they are the same uh, as Web 1.0. Well, in name, at least, they're the same. Um, but we're going to look at how, um, how they're exploited differently in Web 2.0 today. Um, and we're going to look at uh, three vulnerabilities which I think are kind of Web 2.0 specific. So cross-site scripting worms, uh, feed injections. And sorry, just on the cross-site scripting worms, I'm not going to step through Sammy um, like probably everyone else has the last four years. I've got a different cross-site scripting worm for us to look at today. And then some of the problems that can occur with mashup and, and widgets uh, websites. So first up is, is cross-site scripting. I think by now everyone knows that it's not a new vulnerability, but it certainly has the potential to be worse in Web 2.0. And these flaws occur whenever an application takes uh, externally supplied input and uses that as an output into the browser. And there are kind of three main types of cross-site scripting. So I've reflected cross-site scripting attack. Um, and what I've done on these three points is I've got just a line about um, the vulnerability and an example of a bit of attack code there. So a cross, uh, reflected cross-site scripting attack uh, occurs whenever uh, the user-supplied data is um, reflected back to the user in the browser immediately. So it's all on the client side. It's dynamically created on the client side. So if you're only relying on server-side protections, then it won't help you here. Uh, the second type is is a stored cross-site scripting attack, which I guess kind of by name, um, it implies what it is. So you store your malicious code on the server side, so in a database, and then when someone comes and views maybe your blog, um, every time someone comes and views that, it'll execute the code. And we'll look at um, uh, the cross-site scripting worms later, which are essentially stored cross-site scripting attacks. Um, and then finally, we have uh, DOM-based cross-site scripting attack. And again, this is... Um, occurring on the client side. And the example we've got there is if we've got a URL, for example, site.com, and we've got a name equals value. Now, if, if, if the name has, I know, David in there, then the bit of code underneath that URL there is going to pull that out and write it into the page so the website might say, hello, David. Um, but if we don't validate that name value before we pull it into the page and inject it into the page's DOM, then we can open up to DOM-based cross-site script and attacks. Um, so how can this get worse in Web 2.0? Well, we just mentioned DOM-based cross-site scripting attacks and the DOM manipulation to give kind of a dynamic uh, interactive feel to Web 2.0 applications is kind of becoming more and more um, vital all the time. So if we think when we make these updates to the DOM, if we're pulling in data um, from external sources and injecting it straight into the DOM, then we could be opening ourselves up to, to security issues there, and we're going to look at an example in a second of that. Um, we have user-controlled data in more places. You know, the, the web experience for a user anymore isn't just coming along and putting data into a search field or form fields. The websites as a whole, um, things like Facebook, for example, is pretty much built from user-supplied data. So from a, a security point of view, validating all of that data and making sure you don't get caught out with security issues is, is, is more difficult. We also have now self-propagating uh, cross-site script and attack codes. So the cross-site script and worms that I was talking about, we've got a section later on on that, but really they're stored cross-site script and attacks, and we'll look at, again, an example later on. And really kind of tying back to that first point now, where we bring in data from data streams like JSON or XML, um, I think you have to assume that they could be malicious, but I would say a lot of people probably don't. So if you pull in that data and inject it straight into the DOM, then you know, your users can be exploited. So I'm going to just to make some of those points a little bit clearer. Um, because we have a, a, a very dynamic DOM in a lot of these applications, we'll use things like document.write or an eval statement to pull in data and inject it into the DOM. But the data you pull in uh, to your eval or your document.write, if you don't validate that before you use it, then you could be injecting attack code into the user's DOM. So in the example we've got here, kind of the top half of the screen... Um, we're making an XML HTTP request, so we're just making a request for data. And near the bottom is just the bit of code that's actually getting that data for us. So it's going through a proxy, so we're going to an off-domain location.